Hello, my name is Karen Hayon and I'm one of the early years speech and language therapists and part of the team that's rolling out the welcome screen in the Byborough. And this is a training session to enable you to understand the contents of the welcome language screening tool and to be confident in using it. And the session will be about 30 minutes in total. OK, um, so then uh, the aims of the session in a little bit more detail. The session um, hopefully will enable you to understand what the welcome toolkit is and feel confident in using it, to feel confident in using the screen and interpreting the results as well, and to feel confident in selecting appropriate activities that support communication development. So we've got a slide, what is welcome? So it's really um, a, a, a really good tool. It's a complete speech and language toolkit. So it's both assessment and intervention together. And it can be used with children aged six months to six years and by all early years professionals. And also it can be used in an early years or in um, a, a primary school setting as well. And it helps with the early identification of any speech and language uh, difficulty or delay. And also it helps um, our um, understanding of um, age appropriate language skills and also hopefully to boost the family's knowledge as well. So it really is um, a fantastic means of collaborative working. Uh, so far it has been used with over 7,000 children uh, with excellent results. And then thinking about the national and the local context. So basically in the Byborough, we're rolling out welcome within this wider background. And that is that over a million children in the UK do have some sort of communication difficulties. And this equates to two to three children in every classroom. And we know um, that language development at two is a very strong predictor of children's school readiness at four. So there's lots and lots of research about the importance of spoken language development and also um, particularly vocabulary difficulties at age five are associated with sort of uh, very poor outcomes later in life, for example. So we know there's lots that we can do um, to identify and then to support children. So really by enabling this early identification of support for children's language needs, you know, welcome can play a big role in helping children's life chances. So just here is a, just a really an overview, the contents of the toolkit. So um, really um, it's, it's a complete toolkit for the early years and it comprises of the sort of handbook really, I think we'd need to put it in that top uh, sort of box. And then the screening tool, which is the, um, uh, the really the book of uh, uh, score sheet and it's called rules, which really means the question book and also um, a picture book as well. And then uh, there's the big book of ideas, which is sort of how to support the children, the intervention. And then also um, there's also further support available and that's online support materials and also a report wizard, which is a means of uploading results for um, towards a wider national picture as well. Um, and then just to uh, just give you some information about the welcome age ranges. Um, what we need with welcome is we do need 
to uh, know the child's age in months. So the, the bands are in months and that corresponds to the different sections of welcome. So we uh, need to calculate the age in months. So we thought it might be just quite nice to, to practice, just a quick practice. Um, so thinking about age in months and section to use. So for example, if a child is one year, eight months, just to give you a few moments to think about uh, what would their age be in months? And that would be 12 months plus eight months, which would be 20 months. So then that would be section three. OK, now again, if a child was two years, two months, just give you a moment to think about that. Yep, so that would be a child who was 24 months plus two is 26 months, which would be uh, in section four. <clears throat> and then thinking about a child who was uh, four years, 11 months. So again, that child would be 48 months plus 11 months, which would be 59 months. And therefore they would be in section eight. OK, then coming on to thinking about uh, the assessment techniques that we use in Welcome. So there are um, uh, different techniques, I guess. Um, so we use observation of um, the child, definitely also talking to parents and carers. And then obviously um, as part of the screen, we will be getting the child to complete um, different tasks and activities. So to prepare for the screening, so that's the first two steps we've just done already, which is to calculate the child's age in months and then select the relevant score sheet. Um, so whichever section of the, uh, the screen they are going to be in. And then gather what you need, which is the little book of score sheets and rules, which is, as we said, really questions, <laughs> just the questions you're going to need. Uh, it's going to be the uh, picture book and then there might also be some toys that you um, are asked to use within the screen. And then you follow the instructions in the little book of score sheets and rules on how to administer each item. I think it is best if the child is assessed by a practitioner who knows him or her best because then we can evaluate the quality of the information obtained. Uh, for example, if the child wasn't attending very well, um, we, um, it, we would know, for example, their attention was normally good and we could, uh, that could um, sort of be um, used as part of the, uh, the sort of uh, reflection as well, um, because we do want the screening to reflect the child's true abilities. So just to give you just to give an example, so for example, Ali is two years, eight months. So for this, we would go to section five. We'd select the score sheet for selection five, <laughs> go to the <clears throat> questions. So the little book of score sheet and rules for section five, the picture book for section five, and then go through the object and picture based tasks which would be in the um, in the the book, the, the questions book, the little book of score sheets and rules. OK. Um, there is a section with those boxes on the back of the score sheet to note any additional comments. Um, so, for example, how the child used speech sounds, what their attention skills were like, any stammering, um, and any voice difficulties as well. Okay. Um, and just also to note that it is important, obviously, when we do um, talk with the children at 
basically at any time to ensure our own words are very clear, that we maintain eye contact and we do give time for the child to process the information and respond. And then a slide about the colour codes, because there's a nice traffic light symbol. Um, so the uh, the codes will be red, so that would mean the language skills are really quite significantly delayed. Amber, that the skills are mildly delayed, and that green, the language skills are age appropriate. Um, as uh, we just to mention also that the red, amber and green scores do change on the score sheets depending on which um, age band it is. So that's, I think, quite interesting. Um, so, for example, of the 10 items that you have on the score sheet of, of every single score sheet, uh, red can be from 0 to 5. Um, amber, the range is four to seven, and green is the range seven to ten. So it will vary from each age band. So you you know you can't say that um, red is always naught to four, for example. Um, it might be, but it might not be as well. Um, so they are they sort of just vary quite a lot, really. Okay, so just to be aware of that. So then what do we do with the, with the colour codes? So if the colour code is red, we need to repeat the screening process and then we keep using the score sheets from the age band below the child's age until the child achieves a green score. I guess if the child's really having very significant difficulties, we might start at a, you know, we might go down, jump an age band. Um, if they're really having difficulty, and you sort of think they start on the one that there is maybe the age equivalent, but then realise actually we need to go possibly right down. Um, and then you record the section on which the child achieves a green code um, on the original age appropriate score sheet. And then if the colour code is amber, again repeat the screening process using the score sheets from the age bands below until the child achieves a green score again. And, and then uh, keep, follow the advice and activities in the book of ideas in the section above where the child achieved a green score because you want to always be scaffolding them up from where they achieved a green score. And then with the amber children, you want to screen them again within three months using the age appropriate section. So to go back to the age appropriate section. So if the child then still achieves a red or amber score, then I guess consider seeking further assessment advice from a specialist service and I think that really I think that probably would mean making a, a speech and language therapy referral because they're not making uh, progress despite intervention and we know that a lot of children in our earlier settings and we know that up to 50 percent may have delayed language skills but with appropriate intervention will catch up but um, if you have been giving them lots of intervention and they're still not catching up, we then do need to have them referred. Okay. And then thinking if the colour code is green, um, even children who are age appropriate can be helped to develop their communication skills even further. And again, we follow the um, advice and activities in the ideas book in the section above where they achieve that green code. Also a few provisos to, to be aware of. Um, also uh, to be aware of children who score differently for understanding and expression, because there are questions for understanding and expression, um, but they might, they might have uh, 
particularly maybe difficulties with expression um, and not so much with understanding. And just also to be reminded that scores that we get are not really meant to be age equivalents. They're more a profile of strengths and needs for teaching target skills. And then this again is really um, very much a summary of um, the whole process. So hopefully that's a, a summary of what we've just gone through in the slides in um, just one on one page, really. OK, so hopefully that's OK. Um, and uh, we can definitely get these slides uh, to you as well. So then we um, maybe just have a little think about a practice. So let's think about Kelly and she's three years and two months old. So first of all, what's her age in months and what section do you use? I'll give you a, a moment to think about that. OK, so yeah, so Kelly is um, 36 plus two months, three years plus two months old. So she is 38 months old. So that means she would be in section six. So you'd be using section six. OK, and then then we look at what what's been happened. So the welcome score screen has been carried out and Kelly achieved a score of four. So you see that she understood probably a little bit more than she was able to use. So um, with a score of five, what would then be her code? Yep, so her co uh, the colour code would be amber. So the next steps would be, uh, well, let's maybe if I just make you think, have a little think about what would your next steps be then with Kelly? What would you do next? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so you'd carry out the sections below, um, starting with um, section uh, section five because she was in section six. So you'd continue until she gets a green score in a section. So you might possibly have to go down even to section four. We just don't know. Um, and then you carry out activities for the section above the one she received green for. So maybe if she um, uh, got uh, green for section four, finally, she maybe had to, you had to go down a couple of sections. So then again, you'd start with the activities at section five. And if she was um, Amber, you would be trying out those activities for three months. But if there was no improvement, then you would I think really make a speech therapy referral. Um, there are more case studies at the end of the handbook, so there's quite a few nice case studies, pages 27 to 33. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we just wanted to add a slide. So making a referral to the speech therapy team, we do have a, a new newish referral form now. It's been around for about a year or so, um, and it does have a checklist again for each age range. So the results from the welcome screen can really be helpful in completing the referral form. And so this the website is uh, here as a link and it can also be email to you as well. So get in touch with us. I put my email address at the end of this presentation. And also just let you that's what it sort of looks the top of it looks like as well. Um, then we just wanted to add a few words about English as an additional language, as I think there have been a few questions about that this in the last few weeks, actually. Um, 
So welcome states that uh, all children can be included in the welcome approach and it has a whole section on EAL on page 22 of the handbook. Um, I guess as with all assessments of children's language, we always need to consider their skills in their strongest language. And if the child's strongest language is not English, um, we may need to ask the parent about their skills in their strongest language. Um, then we come on to supporting language at home. So we just wanted to highlight the ways that it's so um, it's so important, as we know, to work with parents very closely. Um, and to share all the information we have about language development with parents. And there are now some really, really lovely resources to share with parents. Um, one of them is Vroom, which uh, the parent can sort of sign up and can have age related tips that I think are sort of uh, messaged, you know, every week or something to um, to your phone. Uh, very tiny little tips are so very tailored to the child's age. And then also the other links we have here are very specific links from Hungry Little Minds. And also um, there's also another um, uh, sort of more links with um, the BBC's Tiny Happy People as well. So we just wanted to put some specific ones in there for you that you could uh, share with parents. Just just lovely, very practical, very, very quick. They're literally a minute or two at a time, but they could be something you could possibly put in a, a newsletter to parents. More links there as well. So just lots of lovely ideas through the day that really, uh, really, really promote language development. And then again, some tips as well. Uh, so so supporting language at home, all the things we know about playing alongside children, really being face to face is just really incredibly powerful for children. Talking about every day activities as they happen. So it's all about routines and repetition through the day while they're, they're doing whatever they're doing, especially with actions and allowing children to take the lead and direct activities. We also know that it's great to be really expressive with children, to use intonation, make your voice lively and interesting and encouraging that eye contact. Reducing pressure by avoiding too many questions, maybe using a, we always talk about a six to one ratio of six comments and praises to every one question or directive and also showing interest and responding to your child. And then I think this is all things you know really, working with parents, involving them as much as possible, but the welcome activities are really photocopyable. You can print them um, and make handouts for parents. Demonstrate the activities that are um, in welcome as well, if you have the time and established um, some joint goals as well um, that can be um, quite handy so that then they could be working on the same thing um, at home with their child. Um, so I'll talk about that in a moment as well. So then we come on to the, um, there's a, a, what's called a big book of ideas, which has um, 150 <coughs> activities to support language development, very much in those sections again. Um, and everything corresponds exactly to what you've questioned in the screening tool. So they match exactly. Um, they're appropriate for use with individual children on a one-to-one -one basis or in small groups. Um, and as we said before, always uh, carry out the activities in the um, big book of ideas in the section above where the child got their green score. Um, we thought it might be quite handy just to, at this point, think about language groups because they are, you know, a great way to carry out the activities of welcome. 
Um, and just then again here, why run a language group? Just to say here to flag up that we do also have um, a two hour training on language groups that is running on the 10th and 17th of June, the 10th of June, 10 to 12 online workshop and the 17th of June of part two follow up one hour coaching session. Um, also, there's a couple of sessions to choose from in the morning. So just to plug that, that that's um, really nice for language groups. And then you could you know, obviously use the welcome activities as well in the language groups. Um, so language groups are great because there is less pressure on the individual child. They're supportive and fun, um, peer interaction. So it's supporting the social and emotional aspects of learning that it, you know, we do generally learn in, in groups. Uh, they're uh, great role models, and this is where the children who have maybe scored green, you can use them as role models. They are obviously very time effective because you can group the children who have similar targets. It um, just provides that structured format probably both for yourself as well as the children that um, it gets it it gets to be quite a, a possibly quite a routine that you can vary but there's also something about having a routine as well with the language groups so that means there's lots of opportunities for observation of the children and you're maximizing really those opportunities for children to use and hear language probably in a probably slightly quieter and, and more focused environment th th than it would be on the general nursery floor. And taking turns is easy as well. Um, a few more notes about that. Um, up to six children probably does work best, otherwise it really is a bit too long for taking turns. And we also think it's um, also really good, I think, to plan the next group group immediately after uh, the group you've just done. And then obviously, as we've just said, you can build up a portfolio of session plans as well. So lots and lots of advantages of running language groups. So then coming back to the big book of ideas, uh, as we've really said, there are 10 activities for each section, which then match the score sheets. Um, and then there are um, you know, the other things to try, additional activities, activities to generally support attention and listening skills and strategies, <clears throat> general strategies to support understanding and use of language, uh, speech to sound development and fluency and voice. Um, and uh, on page 48, there is um, a really useful uh, table of speech sound development and a table about the development of attention and information. I think I've said before about the uh, development of voice. And if you have worries about voice, also about disfluency of stammering as well. So the pack, actually, the handbook is just a very useful document, really, about language development. Very, very useful. So <clears throat> just to give you an example of activities. So so this would be in section four. So 4.1 is uh, is actually the screening item is remembering two things at a time. So again, each activity also has a why is this important section? So this is to help you understand the reason for each activity. And it can also be, re I think, really helpful to explain to parents and carers too. So again, I think this is an aspect of the welcome that is um, just really, really useful um, to to sort of communicate, uh, you know, to communicate these things with parents who might not always know maybe why you're sort of doing uh, what you're doing sometimes with regards to language. So, so this is obviously what it says in the why is this important section that verbal understanding is like a list of things uh, that need to be remembered to carry out a task. So uh, the two word level instruction might be give the doll a banana where children have to remember doll and banana. And if children can't do this, 
it may well be that their uh, memory, auditory memory, memory for for speech really and sounds is not yet sufficiently develop, developed. And also, I mean, this is something that we would expect a child um, on their second birthday uh, to be able to uh, to follow this instruction correctly. Um, so it, it's really good, I think, to give this rationale uh, to parents. So then again with this example. So for this section, so then we'd have this what to do. Um, um, a sort of example and, and a step to step guide on how to carry out the activity. So the what to do section would say put out um, four items, everyday items that the child would know the vocabulary for, would know it well. Um, and then would, you would say, so it tells you what to say. And, um, and it says make sure the child waits until the end of the instruction before responding. So you're giving them the whole, they've got to hold that whole instruction in their mind. Um, and then you'd hold out your hand for the items to show them that you want to, them, to give them to you. And then you'll replace the items that they've given you, like the cup and the pencil, for example. You'd replace those and ask for two different items. And then you um, just keep working towards the same aim but via some different activity ideas. And I think this is quite helpful actually, because I think it is quite helpful to put these games into a bit of a context, like a shopping game, or putting anim two animals actually into a field, um, or what's really nice as well, just to make a cardboard um, washing machine, possibly out of a cardboard box, and then have a game where you put um, clothing, items of clothing into the washing machine or sometimes put clothing on a washing line, take clothing off a washing line, but just to put it into an everyday context can be uh, quite motivating as well. And then it gives you some little clues as well. Try not to remember not to look at the items as you ask for them as you're wanting them just to understand the words. You're not giving them any other clues over and above the meaning of the words. And then each what's again, the welcome's really comprehensive and it has um, a step up and step down sections as well. So for for everything, there'll be a step up section. So for remembering two things at a time, uh, you can make things a little bit harder for the children to move them on to the next level. So for step up, the child, for example, might have to wait for you to say go before collecting the objects or walk across the room. And then you might lengthen that time uh, between the instruction being given and then you waiting to say go. <laughs> so there's longer and longer time and extending that walk across the room. You then increase the number of objects, asking for three objects rather than two. And also you can use picture cards because pictures will be slightly harder than using real objects. So uh, lots of um, ways that you can step up activities. And then you might also want to step down so again, we've got a guide for each and every activity about how to make them that bit easier and for keeping the children interested and motivated because they need to, you know, continue to have success. Otherwise, they will lose interest and motivation. So for stepping down, you would um, point and look at the objects as you say them. So using the extra supports that we, we generally use to develop children's language. Um, it's what we use all the time, really, generally. Um, using signs or gestures as well. So we might use the Makaton sign for Apple, for example, or car. Um, we might reduce the number of items on the table so that they're 
uh, choosing from uh, a smaller range. And then we might start by asking for one thing, for example, from a choice of three. Um, and then we'll maybe ask for things in the order that they're set out in the table, on the table, so that's easier for them. They're still hearing um, a longer instruction, but you know, you've made it a bit easier because the order's the same. And then you might give them a gesture, a, a sort of waiting hand gesture. So that again helps them with the waiting um, uh, to, to help them um, again, give them giving them extra visual support uh, to just to scaffold them up to the desired level. So um, we're just just about really to finish now. Um, we can uh, then think about our next steps, which will be to have a look uh, through all the welcome materials. And you, um, I think you should either have, uh, I think, uh, have collected, I think, the pack from the town hall, or hopefully be about to sign up for welcome and collect your pack, um, and then have a go at screening at least one child and preferably more. Um, the nurseries who have already started with welcome have screened all the children in the setting, um, which I think, it, it, you know, once you get the hang of it, you, you, you just want to screen all of them. Um, maybe also when you do start, start with a child you're not particularly concerned about to get used to the whole process. Um, and then I'd say really discuss in your team how it went and um, we are going to be starting welcome peer support sessions. These will, you'll have further information about these and the uh, one of our team in speech and language therapy will be attending as well, at least some of these peer support sessions. So hopefully that will give you um, that um, uh, forum to discuss um, any issues you might be having uh, but I must say the um, all the nurseries who have so far um, started with welcome I think have, have, have found it to be a, a you know a real boon a real boost to their the offer that they can give the children and what they can uh, yeah what they can support um, the children with with their language development so I hope um, that's all hopefully made things a bit clearer for you. Thank you very much for listening. And if you do have any queries, um, please um, don't hesitate to contact me. And uh, this is my email, which is just my name, um, Karen Hayon at nhs.net. So thanks once again for listening and enjoy using welcome. Thank you.